Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Can TV 21 Hotline. Let's talk etiquette. <laughs> My name is Nathan Wright, and I'm the executive director of the Etiquette Foundation of Illinois. And we are extremely excited about this particular show today. But first, I would like to introduce my special co-host, Miss Georgia Salmon, Etiquette Maven Extra Extraordinary. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Nathan. It is indeed a pleasure to be here again. Ah, oh, yes. The last show we did was just off the chain. It was. Off the chain. It absolutely was. We had a was. great time, and people are watching that show I get calls even today on that show. That's how much that show has been well received by our viewers out there. So continue to watch us and to call in. That number is 312-738-1060. Again, 312-738-1060. Call us. We want to hear from you. But before that, you call... Allow me to put the subject up that we're going to be talking about today. Ah, <laughs> the impact of etiquette in our daily lives. A life made up of rules and regulations governing our social and professional behavior. That's a mouthful. That is absolutely a mouthful. But it's a subject that we should talk about. We believe it's an important subject to discuss and we just want you to kind of, you know, join us. So don't hesitate. Pick that phone up and give us a call. But I want to turn to my special guest just to get the subject and the conversation going. The impact of etiquette in our daily lives. What does that say to you? What is it telling you? It says a lot. And I say that because etiquette is a behavior. It's... Um, customs yes and uh it's how we should have been raised and <laughs> yes. who we should be yes. so it should have a major impact in our everyday walk absolutely in our everyday uh everything everything yes so when we use the term impact of etiquette what how do, how do you define impact in terms of um how do, you, how do you consider that word in relationship to etiquette, how the impact of etiquette? Okay, how it affects others. Ah. How it affects that's, others. That's so true. Yes. And it comes from, uh, etiquette comes from within, and it comes yes. from uh, how you've been taught. Yes. And it uh, comes from how you present yourself. Yes. yes. So that's what etiquette is, and it impacts other people based on how you how you, um, uh, what you use yes, in, with your etiquette, how right. you, what your, your courtesy is, yes. what your uh, decorum is. Yes. <laughs> what, uh, all of that impacts everything. Yes. It impacts uh, your, um, when you're in school. It yes. impacts when you're in a social gathering. Yes. So it's impactful, yes. but you cannot impact and a positive if you don't have the <laughs> etiquette that I was raised, raised with. with. Right, yes, right. absolutely. We're, yes, yes, yes. And it, it, is, it is very impactful. It's extremely impactful. And in fact, many of the, many, much of the violence, let me say it that way, much of the violence we hear on TV among our young people, like uh, that person insulted me or disrespected me, and they turn to violence as a way of resolving this dispute or this insult, however they de describe it. So it, it's a matter of really knowing and being having a good understanding of the role of etiquette and then how to use it to resolve an issue like something like that. Our kids, you know, this happens all the time to them, feeling like they were disrespected or someone said something to them that they didn't think was very kind, you know. So... Etiquette is almost like an intellectual exercise. I would say it's an intellectual exercise. What do you think? Well, uh, yes, you can say it's intellectual. It's an intellectual in, uh, exercise. But more importantly, I believe it's a, a, a lifestyle. It's an upbringing. Yes. It's, um, um, 
it's who you are. Mm -hmm. It's not a role. We talked about that earlier, right. whether right. or not it's a, a role. It is not a role. It is who you are, how you've been um, uh, trained yes. from, a ch from childhood or from birth. Yes. To whatever age you are, it's mm -hmm. a lifestyle. It's a, a part of your your uh, person. Yes. So, you know, if you're in a situation that's negative, y you you know of some skills and some manners that can um, be ever so impactful in a positive way. That's so true. Absolutely, that is so true, and that's really what etiquette is. It's a, it's a lifestyle. It's a, it's a value system. Absolutely. And uh, I, I honestly think that this should be like taught to our children as a parent, as an example, as a parent. A parent should teach this subject to their child almost every day, I would think. Absolutely. The words should be mentioned and there should be some reference to it and even some lessons, some examples taught to that child, you know, how this can be used and incorporated into their into their lifestyle, into their value system. Absolutely. And uh, so the impact of it is, like you said, is so, so powerful. C could you give us another example of how it could be used, a situational kind of a thing, how etiquette is used in terms of, of uh, ingratiating yourself with someone or to... Uh, compliment someone, in some, some form like that? Well, as you know, I, I work in the school system as a sub-teacher. Yes. And I see kids, students, all the time. Some come, come with that very um, 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 etiquette or civility that's very natural. And yes. some you have to stop and teach. Uh, yes. Some students you have to actually stop the subject matter that you are there to facilitate right. and integrate some etiquette or civility. Yes. For right. example, okay. if a, one student bump up to another student, mm -hmm. you know, happens all the time. it happens all the time, yes. and the other student, uh, the student who, who bumps, say, oh, oh, pardon me, or excuse me, or I'm mm -hmm. sorry, mm -hmm. then you know that that child has been taught some etiquette and some civility from an early, early on. Yes. Then if the other st a student negatively push back or, you know, or don't, you know. Take it in a negative not, way. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or not receptive to the courtesy of, excuse me, I'm sorry, forgive me. Yes. Then you know that that child needs some, some etiquette or some <laughs> civility <laughs> training. And Which is okay. And that's something you, you see every day in the, in the classroom, I'm assuming. You see those kinds of situations where there's some conflict or interaction with two students and it's not handle, handled appropriately and thus this, it's an opportunity for you to teach. It's an opportunity for you to introduce, incorporate etiquette mm -hmm. and civility. Yes, and that's you know, and it doesn't have to be a long drawn out mm -hmm. uh, lesson. Mm -hmm. Just Johnny, he said, "I'm sorry." Okay. Do you receive that or not? And Johnny will say, nine times out of ten, if excuse me, I'm sorry, forgive me, is their approach, the yes. other student will receive it. Yes, and that's when you're teaching, and we're emphasizing the importance and the uh, significance and the impact of etiquette. Yes. Well, let me say to the audience here that this is an outstanding etiquette instructor, etiquette teacher. So her telling you and articulating at this level just tells you how sharp she is in the classroom <laughs> as an etiquette teacher. <laughs> but give, give us another example of uh, how you may use a situation like that to teach the entire class, not as an etiquette teacher teaching etiquette, but as a sub teaching the general subjects in a situation arise like that, and you may take advantage of it to teach the other students in the classroom as an example of how you deal with or how you resolve such an incident. 
Could you give us another example? Well, do you do that? Does that happen? First of all, it happens all the time. And you take advantage of that, op that opportunity to Absolutely. talk to the entire class about how to resolve certain kinds of situations. I absolutely do, oh, because okay. it's important. It's, imp it's important not only to introduce it as a means and a way of solving problems, but of learning. Yes. Of learning. Yes, yes. yes. Because when a student demonstrates positive manners and behavior, then you can teach. You can teach. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's important that when you want... Uh, um, when they want your attention, mm -hmm. they do something very simple. Raise your hand. <laughs> right. Raise your hand. Yes, yes. And don't blurt it out. Yes. Raise your hand, and Miss Selman will acknowledge you. Yes. And that's and classroom th etiquette. That's classroom etiquette, mm -hmm. but it goes beyond classroom. Mm -hmm. Even in the workplace, if you learn these lessons mm -hmm. in the classroom and at home, I would yes. start at home first. Absolutely. Because if you if it's taught at home, once the student gets into the classroom, they'll know all the protocol. Yes. They'll know exactly. they'll know How the to yes. Right, that situation. Absolutely. Right, right. And then it, it, it goes beyond the classroom. It goes into a college or a training facility. Yes. It goes into the workplace. Yes, yes. So it's a lifestyle that should be ongoing. Ongoing. Yes. It's a lifestyle or a, um, uh, a manner, you yes. know, a behavior yes. that should start from home, mm -hmm. continuing into the school's mm -hmm. system, yes. and from there into life. Into life, yes. Who can argue about someone being <laughs> nice and polite a gentleman right. <laughs> I mean, that opens the door for you right, when you get right, out of the car. Right. Who's going to complain about that? And I enjoy being a gentleman. Believe me, <laughs> men out there, young boys, it's such a pleasure to honor a, a lady. And it's so easy to do. It's not complicated or hard. It just shows the world that you respect women. And yes. be it your mother, be it a stranger, a female on the street that you don't know, Show her respect, and you'll get it back. It'll come back to you, and it makes you a better person. It connects you with the world around you. So I'm yes. encouraging all of our young men and older men <laughs> <laughs> to, to practice being a gentleman. Yeah, chivalry is not dead. No, it is not. <laughs> so, Absolutely so let's, not. Let's keep it alive, men out there in, in our viewing audience. But one of the other things that you know, that etiquette represented. Let me put this back up there again so that uh, it could be seen. Yeah, this, this, whole, this whole idea about rules and regulations uh, that really is a part of etiquette. And so would you like to talk a, a moment about that just so that, uh, you know, our audience can have some insight in this, this whole thing about governing rules and regulations that's part of our society? Well, as I said before, rules, regulations, they start, it starts from home. Mm -hmm. And it's in the schools. Mm -hmm. You know, there are schools. One of the um, uh, uh, three of the rules that uh, one school that I go to, they say respect, responsibility, and safety. Huh, okay. And the we, kids have to say this every single day. day. Excellent. Yes. And that's what I expect. I yes. know there's I know these three rules. Right. Do, so when I go into the classroom, classroom. I emphasize, I yes. re-emphasize th the three things that's expected of you. Right. Respect, respect. Miss Selman. Yes. Miss Selman is gonna respect you. Yes. Be responsible meaning to do the assigned work that you have to do. Yes. And to be safe. Yes. <laughs> so it's simple. Yes. Rules right. and regulations is a part of our culture. It's right. a part of society. Yes. And it starts from at home. It starts at home. And it, it home. evolves in the schools. Yes. And any and every uh, aspect of life are rules and regulations. Absolutely. And, you know, as parents, I'm a parent, you're a parent. As parents, it's so important that we teach our children 
that when they go into the public, and a school is somewhat public, when they go into another institution, that you have the right mindset, you have the right values, you have the right protocol as to how to conduct yourself in that specific environment. Absolutely. And if the parent teach their children those rules and regulations, because the school has has rules and regulations. Absolutely. And the parents should be quite aware of what those rules and regulations are. And I know most schools, at least when I was going to school, you had a rule a rule book. Yes. I don't know. Do they, they have call them handbook, policy handbook, books? Policy yes. Books. Right. And those rules and regulations have serious consequences. Absolutely. And so the parents should be very, very aware of what that rule book contains and to make sure their child is in adherence to those rules and regulations. Absolutely. And you, you see it every day that they aren't. And that's when, they, that's when it becomes your custom. That's when it yes. becomes habit. Habit, yes. And that's when it becomes your person. Yes. And it's easy. It it, it's is. easy when it's a part of who you are. It becomes yes. a part of who you are. Yes. And I say it becomes a part because it's a process. Of learning who you are. Yes. Of, of developing you, who you are. Absolutely. Of finding your identity. Absolutely. And it's your a purpose. process. It's a process, and absolutely. Habit. Yes. Habit forming. Yes. So when you're teaching and you're even at home, when you're teaching your own children, mm -hmm. you know, you, uh, you're te teaching habits and you're teaching um, uh, rules and rules. Regulations. regulations. I mean, we have to abide by them all the time. <laughs> right. Driving here to the studio, right. <laughs> we had to, we had the uh, rules of the road. Rules of the road. We have to abide by the stop signs. Yes. Oh, we have a caller. Uh, yes, yes, caller, you're on the air. Hi, thanks for taking my call. Um, I'm calling because my nephew had recently, he just uh, turned 16, and he started hanging out with the wrong crowd, and I want to get him help get him right back on the right path. How do you suggest I begin to do that? That's a great question. Yes, That's yes, a great yes, question. Yes, yes. Would you like to take that on first, and I'll follow up with a suggestion or two? Well, I, you know, I, I think it's important that we make our youth today feel important, feel uh, that whatever their concerns are, are respected, and we have to respect them if we want respect, and we need to kind of find out what their interests, what, what are their interests, what is he interested in, and be as supportive to him as you can be. Engage him. Be supportive to that to that nephew or that brother, yeah. because they need it more than ever, more than ever. There are so many outside influences, so many negative elements out there. Mm -hmm. Any family support that you can render to him is needed. Yes. He needs your attention, and we need to pay more attention to them. Yes, yes. And I mean our full attention to them. Yes, yes. I, absolutely. That's, that's, that's excellent, and I agree wholeheartedly with that. And I, I can only add, um, when a young man especially wants to venture out, it's really about him discovering who he is as well as discovering the environment he lives in. It's just a natural for a boy or a young man that's 16. Uh, most of us as kids uh, would get on our bike and ride several blocks away from the house just to explore. Whereas most with females, they would probably stay right in that block riding their bike. They won't go too far from home. Yes. But our boys, I mean, as a young boy myself, you know, my parents, when we rode off on our back, they didn't know where we went, <laughs> really. Time and we went time. over in the lake and downtown on our bikes. So a boy has an, another kind of need to adventure. Now, that companionship he may be attracted to, that's where you would take time to talk with him and ask him, what is he, in, what is he searching for? And how we as a family can help him find what he's searching for. 
What information did he seeking out in the street? Is it simply the camaraderie? Is it simply just getting to know your neighbors in the community or the other young men in the community? Try to explore that with him so that you can get a better sense of what is really uh, compelling him to want to go out and hang out on the corners and make him aware of the dangers of going out there and hanging out. And there's so many dangers that's out there and he need to know how to deal with those dangers and those risks. You know, even if he decide to go out there, he still needs to know when to leave. Yeah. Are they talking the wrong kind of talk? Or do I want to c condone it? Do I want to be involved in it? You know, tell him how to exit that kind of a situation. He may have to tell a little white lie that, hey, I had to get home. I got some, I have to do. It's an emergency. I'll talk to you guys later. You know, whatever it takes to exit from that. Because as he is aware, there's tremendous dangers out there for that young, that young man of yours. So that would be our advice, uh, unless you had something else to add to that. No. Okay. Don't that, give up on <clears throat> him. No. And try to stay as close to him with a, uh, uh, a loving relationship as you possibly can. Yeah. Let him know that you love him and use as much etiquette expressions to show it. Absolutely, absolutely. Kindness. Yes. And teach him etiquette. Calmness. Make sure he understands how to use etiquette. Don't give up on him. That that would be very, very helpful for him because as he go out into the world, etiquette is going to play a major role in where he goes and how far he goes. A young man that's polite and courteous and considerate, it's, it's evident. It shows. Employers receive those young men and women much, much better than they receive those who don't have those skills. And so make sure that you take time to go through some lessons with him, get an etiquette book, and help him go through it if you do it a couple of times a week, and explain to him the benefits of being considerate. Yes. Yeah, if he understands that, then he's going to be successful, much more successful with it than without it. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Let me put up before, I know our time is running out, and I need to put up our information so that for those out there who want to contact us, we'll be able to have our information. Uh, Let's Talk Etiquette is the name of the show. Uh, it's 312-473-2942. Let me give it to you again. Our number is 312-473-2942. And I think you can see our web information. That's www.efoi.org. Or if you want to send us an email, it's info at uh, efoi.org. So, I wanted to get that in there before the show ended. And um, is there any other area of this grand subject for the next minute or two that we have left that you would like to, this impact, this, the impact of etiquette in our daily lives? Is there any other comments you may have on this? No, I'm truly, truly uh, impressed with the topic. Yes. And I thoroughly enjoyed uh, being here today. And... Um, I think we should continue to promote yes. the impact of etiquette in any and every arena yes. that we come in contact with. Absolutely. And it's never too young to start with your children. When they start crawling, you yes. know, start inputting Teaching. that information into their psyche, into their heads, you know, so that when they are communicating verbally, they will be able to use those skills starting out. This is where... You, you incorporate those values into your child when they're very, very young. And so I'd like to conclude with that and say have a wonderful, safe weekend. And thank you so much for the caller who called in. And thank you for being my guest, Ms. Selman. Thank you. And The pleasure was mine. Wonderful. And have a good evening.